Hi, welcome to Moments with Mother Nature. Today we're going to talk about garlic mustard. It is an invasive, non-native plant. It is native to Europe and it was originally brought in the 1800s as an edible herb by the colonists. However, it has escaped into the wild and has now become one of Ontario's most aggressive forest invaders. This is an example of some disturbed soil. This, was, this is an area where it looks like the TRCA was building a ramp to go across a wet area. And now garlic mustard is beginning to invade the forest floor. Just behind it are some nice water uh, wildflowers. Hopefully this plant does not get well established in the forest floor here. It will threaten the existence of the other native wildflowers. The first year, garlic mustard is just a small rosette of leaves with no bloom. Then it survives over the winter, and the second year, it begins to bloom. This is a second year garlic mustard plant. You can see that it's quite has a tall stalk, and it is just beginning to bloom. This will bloom uh, a, a flower spike that will have several of those little white flowers and the flowers, when they are pollinated, they will be, develop into hundreds of tiny seeds. Seeds can remain viable in the soil and can sprout even up to 30 years later. The plant is adapted to growing in sunny or shaded habitats. It has invaded forests, riverbanks, urban gardens, and roadsides. It does not provide a valuable food source for, for native wildlife but it does inhibit the growth of many beautiful native wildflowers, threatening several of Ontario's species of, at risk. In order to help control this plant, it's very important to dig it out before the seeds are formed. The root system is quite interesting. I'm just going to remove it from, this is in my garden, I certainly don't want it here. One of the features of garlic mustard that makes it more, more difficult to control when you're pulling it out is the fact that the root does not go straight down into the ground. It generally comes down and has some kind of a curve to it. You can see these different samples. They always have some kind of curve. If it is pulled out and broken just at the top and the root is left in the ground, because of the way the structure is, it often happens when the soil is very hard, if you just pull it, try to pull it out and don't dig it out with your trowel, then the root remains and that will re-sprout so that you have not controlled the plant if you leave the root in. It's important to get the entire root out of the soil. The best time to remove garlic mustard is late May and early June when the blooms are are on the plant but not gone to seed. Once you remove them, then it's important to make sure that they don't regrow. So you can transfer them to a black garbage bag and seal it tight and put them in the hot sun. That will allow them to be heat treated and, re and be rendered non-viable. It's also important, there can be the seeds can be in the soil. So it's also important if you're, particularly if you're doing garlic mustard control in a wildlife area, it's really important to make sure that before you leave the area you clean the soil off your boots so that you or shoes so that you do not transfer seeds to another area that you may be going to.